We are Amazaji Global Service Learning. Uh, we were founded 18 years ago in Santarém, Brazil. Amazaji is the Portuguese word for friendship. And we were originally founded as a volunteer vacation organization. So basically we used to take uh, uh, folks who were interested in, in not just having a vacation, but um, serving while they were on vacation. And then throughout the 90s, we morphed into what's considered a global service learning organization. We uh, created uh, what I like to think of as our soul at that time. Um, that's when we created a pedagogy and started working with universities to take college students uh, to communities all over the world uh, to engage in community-driven um, uh, development. So we work with over 40 universities each year um, and dozens of high schools as well. And what we do is we connect um, uh, faculty and students to uh, our community partnerships which are in 11 countries um, through service and learning um, and that takes uh, place in many forms uh, everything from clean water initiatives in Tanzania to uh, 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 working on a health boat in Brazil um, we've worked with tutoring in the Navajo Nation and um, working on running an at-risk youth summer camp in Jamaica each year. Um, so it really is diverse in what students and faculty members get involved in. Um, uh, but we've been based here in Pittsburgh for about the last 12 years. Um, and we're now uh, very honored to say that we are the only organization in the city um, that has uh, United Nations consultative status. I'll start with a little background story. A lot of people don't realize that in this uh, small little hip office here uh, on Smithfield Street, um, at any given time, we'll be working um, uh, in you know several languages, several currencies, um, and connecting with um, community leaders in uh, 11 different countries. Um, and we started noticing uh, that when students and faculty returned back to the United States, um, there wasn't the outlet for advocacy that they, they, wa they wanted or that they were thirsty for. Um, a lot of our friends around the world are going through um, very different challenges. Um, but then there's also a lot of challenges that are the same, something like clean water um, issues. We find that uh, in Tanzania, some of the issues they're facing are very similar um, in, in regards to access to clean water um, as our friends in Bolivia, um, similar to uh, our friends in Brazil, in the Amazon, or even in Ghana. Um, and so we really wanted to try to figure out a way to advocate better um, uh, for our friends around the world. Um, and so uh, it was about a two-year application process, but just last week we got word that um, we are able, uh, we, we do have the status now, we are able to send a representative to the United Nations um, and uh, basically we collaborate with other NGOs to um, try to address some of these issues. So we're very honored uh, for that um, and we're honored to represent the city of Pittsburgh um, as well uh, in, in that domain. So students get a lot of great experiences. We find that 95% of students have good or great experiences. Um, uh, they, uh, so I should be clear that we have a mutually empowering mission. So our mission um, isn't just uh, to transform uh, American students' lives. It's also to uh, uh, empower communities. So we're interested not only in student educational outcomes, but also community outcomes. Um, students oftentimes report having their career goals um, changed or, or, or vindicated. I find a lot of education majors or nursing majors that come back to the United States and say, you know, I always knew I wanted to be a teacher and then I uh, 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 taught uh, English as a second language in Tanzania and now I know for sure that's what I want to do with my life. Um, so we find that these experiences are extremely empowering. A lot of our alums are doing amazing things. They're becoming professors, NGO executive directors. Um, uh, they're working in the nonprofit sector, in the for-profit sector, running social businesses. Um, so for over 18 years, we've, um, we feel that we've really sort of made an impact um, here in Pittsburgh uh, uh, through what they've learned on the ground in some of the countries that we work in. Well, we actually work with um, not just students, but we work with folks ages 6 to 93. Uh, a fun fact, we actually ran a service learning program in Jamaica this year with uh, a, a little girl from Fox Chapel who was only six years old. Um, and her experience uh, was equally as powerful, actually, as you find from a college student. Or uh, we also work with um, senior citizens uh, in some of our programs. And we find that many of, uh, uh, many of them come back time and time again to our partnerships and become really sort of connected to our friends in Bolivia or in Brazil. Um, so while we 
mostly work with high school and college students. We really work with um, everybody. Um, I would say that our bread and butter, though, uh, what we perhaps do best is um, what we call faculty-led programming. It's programming that is credit-bearing um, uh, and that we're able to inject some of our best practices in curriculum uh, in these programs. So there are a lot of different organizations around the world that um, does uh, uh, that connects students to communities around the world. Many of these organizations are not-for-profits. Uh, many of them are for-profit uh, companies. Um, in fact, in Africa alone, there are over 350 volunteer organizations connecting students um, to that continent. Um, uh, it is a huge growth industry, uh, and the student tourism industry is worth billions and billions and billions of dollars. So what we've seen over the last few years is, um, especially in the service sector, and there is a market for this, and this is what's interesting. Um, uh, people think of volunteering as uh, something that uh, people um, do uh, without paying. Um, but in what we do, there's a lot of payments that are involved, especially through tuition. Um, and so what we've seen is a lot of very large companies enter the, the sector um, and in a similar way that we see in the for-profit education system, um, uh, sort of use marketing practices to attract those students um, and, uh, in our opinion, sometimes not focusing on learning outcomes. Uh, an interesting thing started to happen uh, about uh, a year ago. We noticed that our communities um, around the world uh, in their evaluations and feedback to us were saying things like, you know, uh, we love hosting students. Um, we absolutely love it. Um, we feel like we get a lot out of it. Um, unfortunately, uh, we don't think we get nearly as much as the students that you're sending down here get. Um, and that's not fair. I mean, we're hosting the students. Um, uh, you know, they go back to the United States and they put on their resume that they volunteered in um, uh, Jamaica, for example, um, for three weeks, and hopefully it helps them get a better job. Um, but our friends in Jamaica can't do the same. They can't write the same on their resume. In fact, the joke is, um, what are they going to put on their resume? They hung out with white people for three weeks. Um, it's not a, a, a great sell um, for professional development. So at the same time we were getting this feedback, we were also getting feedback um, from, from our, our student alumni saying uh, they uh, felt that they were getting more out of some of these experiences than, their, um, uh, th than the folks that they were serving with. And so we took a hard look at the, at the study abroad industry, at the global service learning industry, and uh, we, we started to wonder if and how it could look better. How could it actually be mutually empowering? How, what could we do to give or grant or enable better professional development opportunities for our friends in these communities? We actually picked up some fair trade coffee and uh, we said, well, this is a commodity. Coffee is a commodity and they've been able to uh, uh, create a fair trade structure for this commodity so that folks who are harvesting that, that, that coffee are able to get uh, a proper uh, compensation for it and proper voice in uh, the way it is shipped and marketed and et cetera. Um, is that possible in study abroad? Is that possible in, 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 in volunteering? Um, well, first we have to recognize that volunteering and study abroad uh, are, are, have been commodified. Um, and uh, we did that. We said, okay, well, let's be honest with ourselves. There's a huge marketplace here. Um, a volunteer programs, study abroad programs are being bought and sold like chocolate, right? Um, well, if that's the case, then there's got to be a fair trade way. There's got to be a more fa a fairer way to make this a reality, to make these programs operate. So we looked around at our sites, um, and we thought, wow, well, you know what? We already have a mar we already have a model for fair trade learning, um, and that model's in Jamaica, where we have a a wonderful partnership with an organization that has a, a collective of um, house mothers. These women host and feed our volunteers and get paid a certain amount each day. They then are asked to reinvest that money into a community pot, and they meet every Thursday to vote on how those funds and are going to interact with those volunteers. It's become very empowering, and to date we've injected hundreds of thousands of dollars into this community. We've had um, hundreds and hundreds of volunteers uh, visit the community, and every year 
uh, even more and more. Um, our community partners just recently won um, uh, the, the Michael Manley Award uh, in Jamaica, which is the highest achievement of any community development organization. Um, so we're very proud of them. Uh, and we're very proud of that system. But what has happened as a result of that is that we have identified a model um, that resembles a fair trade model. Um, so at the end of the day, what we've done is recognize that there's a global value chain here. Just like coffee, when you have a farmer that's producing and getting very little out of it, and you have a, the, the coffee corporate chain that's just putting a label on it and marketing it um, and making the largest percentage out of it, we have that same issue in study abroad. Um, and we all know some of the, uh, the stereotypes uh, of study abroad, where students are going and um, uh, you know, they're, they're very much uh, just extracting learning. They're, 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 not, uh, they're being isolated oftentimes or with their own um, uh, uh, other fellow Americans. They're partying too much. Um, and so fair trade learning is a way to um, sort of go beyond that and um, uh, stay away from the predatory marketing, stay away from some of these same trends we've seen in the, uh, the larger uh, for-profit education industry and um, really get to the grassroots of, the, of it and offer our partners um, the respect that they deserve. The first step in uh, getting the word out on uh, fair trade learning is having conversations in uh, forums like this, right? Um, so it's only been a year since we've created this idea, um, but we're really working to uh, uh, talk to administrators, talk to faculty, and talk to students um, about this idea and about the fact that they have the option um, uh, to put pressure on their universities uh, to focus on mutually empowering experiences. Um, students are very eager um, to have a socially responsible campus. Um, uh, we see that in many different um, issues of social justice. Students will stand up to their university and say, um, we don't agree with uh, the, the way these workers are being treated in the cafeteria. We demand that they get fair wages, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, well, we think that students uh, can consider doing similar type um, uh, uh, or having similar type of conversations with their universities about study abroad. We find it very strange that in uh, the academy, uh, for-profit universities are oftentimes looked down upon. Um, there's a, a relatively new report that came out uh, that talks a lot about uh, the, the, the loan default rate in for-profit universities and um, some of the predatory activities that go on in marketing. Well, study abroad doesn't have the loan default problem. Um, it does have uh, the predatory marketing problem, um, the lack of learning outcome problem, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and we find it strange that universities, um, uh, on one hand, will kind of look down upon some of the for-profit universities out there. And then it, with the other hand, they'll hire and contract out with these for-profit uh, 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 providers, is what we call it. Um, so as I mentioned before, Amazaji works in 11 countries. And um, we work on a whole slew of different projects. Um, we prescribe to something called community-driven service, which means that uh, even though many of our staff here have a background in international development, uh, we don't choose or we don't develop the programs for a community. We believe that our communities know what's best for our communities. Um, so typically the way our programs work is that our communities either have an ongoing project or they create a project fitting for that university or, or high school that will be visiting um, uh, the community. So uh, one of our hallmark um, projects over the course of the last uh, five years has been our clean water project in, in Tanzania. Um, it's possible that you've heard of our, uh, the, the Water Walk for Women's Rights that we put on each year here in Pittsburgh. Um, uh, but to date, uh, we, we've helped to um, bring clean water to over a thousand individuals um, in the Karagwe district of western Tanzania. Um, and we've done this by raising funds here in Pittsburgh um, to and um, uh, cultivating those funds into project material costs in Tanzania. And we build these very large uh, rainwater harvesting systems. And uh, we've also done outreach um, uh, in, in showing our friends there um, uh, uh, how this process works and um, uh, collaborating with them on um, uh, pumps and boreholes and all sorts of different um, uh, ways to access clean water. 
Um, and, but most importantly, we've offered uh, the resources that are necessary for that. Uh, in Jamaica, uh, we've uh, run uh, computer education courses. In fact, a group from uh, Community College of Allegheny County, CCAC, uh, recently um, uh, worked with uh, our House Mother Collective in teaching them um, basic computer skills uh, so that they can, A, um, have that on their resume, but B, um, interestingly enough, be able to communicate better with their children and grandchildren who do use the computer every day. Um, uh, but would come home and talk about it and their parents and grandparents wouldn't understand what they were talking about. So basic things like using um, a keyboard and a mouse and how to access the internet and Microsoft Word. Um, so really our projects uh, vary all over the world, um, uh, but uh, typically uh, we try to place students and student groups that are best f fit for the projects that are happening. The best way to find out about us is to visit our website at uh, www.amazaji.org. Uh, if you're a student, you can take a credit-bearing course with us. Um, we have full semester programs, which are quite intense, actually, uh, and very unique. Um, but we also have uh, uh, shorter-term programs. Um, if you're an individual who has a particular skill or a graduate student, um, we can place you uh, uh, in a, a, what's essentially a global internship abroad. Um, and if you are just a, a regular uh, guy in the neighborhood who is interested in uh, giving back and learning a little bit about a, an, another community and engaging in uh, community-driven service, um, then we can organize programs uh, for you. And we call those programs open group programs that most people can sign up for, um, uh, sort of like our old school volunteer vacation type project. Well, uh, our communities are always looking for uh, in-kind material donations, um, and pretty much anything goes from uh, we just had a, a large tent that we shipped to Jamaica to pens and, and markers and coloring books. Um, we, of course, are always looking for uh, financial uh, donations. Um, it, uh, it takes quite a bit to make these programs run, um, and they are very transformative for both the students and the communities. Um, uh, and we're also looking for um, just general support here in the city of Pittsburgh. Um, we would love to uh, have a closer, more formalized connections uh, with some of our communities. There's some places like Santarang, Brazil, where for 18 years now um, we have been uh, connecting hundreds and hundreds of Pittsburghers uh, to, uh, to, to this community. Um, and just recently uh, the, the financial climate's changed enough where we can now host our friends from Brazil here in Pittsburgh. Um, so we're looking to formalize those relationships, um, have larger uh, business relationships, nonprofit relationships, maybe even sister city type relationships in the future.